Fox Plaza. This is Bluebrick Set 107190. It was released in February 2024 for about 60 euros. This construction block set consists of 1534 pieces, which are compatible to bricks by other construction blocks companies like Lego, Kobe, Mega, Fantasy, and so on. This building here is most famous for being the filming location of the first Die Hard movie. In that movie, the building was called Nakatomi Plaza. This model here is in the scale 1 to 500. Bluebricks uses the scale for most of their skyscraper sets. As you can see, this is a Bluebrick special set. This means, unlike the pro sets, the set only comes in a quite boring box. But I noticed that Bluebricks slightly has changed their box design. Have a look here at this older box. This is how the boxes looked like previously. And yeah, now we got a slightly updated print. You can see here that it says specials and the domain isn't written down under the logo. It's written down here and yeah, there's a bit more text now. More languages, I think. And let's have a look at the back side. There we got now a logo and they turned the sticker here into a print. Oh, I think this thing here still is a little sticker. All right, but we have talked enough now about the box. What's important is what's inside the box. And this is what we are going to find out now. Another thing about special sets is that in most cases they don't come with different building sections to which the bricks are pre-sorted. They simply come in unnumbered bags. Some of the bags only contain bricks of one type, but most of the bags come with a quite big variation of different bricks. What else did we find inside this box besides the bags? Well, we got uh, this huge plate here and a sticker. I think of all the Bluebrick sets I have built so far, there had only been maybe two or three sets before this one which contained a sticker. I'm really not a fan of stickers. I am terrible at applying them. Let's hope I can manage to place the single sticker here. We will see. Well, what else is there to say? Bluebrick special sets don't come with printed building instructions. You have to download a PDF file from the Bluebricks website. As you can see, I have done here this before. All right. With a brick count of above 1,000 uh, pieces, I normally uh, would recommend to Open all the bags before you start with your build and uh, sort the pieces by type. But uh, this year is a skyscraper, so everything is quite repetitive. That means we got a lot of bricks of the same type. And there are only a few tiny pieces here. I think it's not really necessary to uh, sort all the bricks. You will be able to find them anyway. Normally I always recommend to sort the bricks because it saves a lot of time during the building process. 
when you don't have to search for an individual piece at, at each building step, but with that many huge pieces and pieces of the same type, I think it's not really necessary. But I'm going to sort the bricks anyway. So I have sorted all the bricks and while sorting them I stumbled upon a few bricks which are actually still protected by Lego. We got these one by one by one two third um, brick modifieds with studs on the side here. Those are still protected by Lego. And then we got a whole bunch of these two by two plates with cut corner. Those are all protected by Lego. 2x2 two two jumper blades. Those are also still protected. And finally we got these 1x2 plates with clip. Those are still protected too. I really don't know how Blue Bricks always manages to use protected pieces in their sets. Normally Lego is very strict and doesn't allow other companies to do this. Blue Bricks is a European company. They are on Lego's home market. I don't know how they do this. Maybe they have some kind of deal with Lego. Very strange. Well, alright. Then now I think it's time to start with the build. This build was, or the set was, designed by Prubrix designer Anton, and I already showed you many, many of his architecture sets. A lot of churches like uh, Westminster Abbey, uh, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, uh, Mainz Cathedral, Ulminster, uh, the Acropolis of Athens, the Forum Romanum and I think, yes, yeah, St. Mark's Square. Maybe there are also some other sets that I forgot about, but he always has very cool designs. And I hope that this set is going to be as cool as his other sets. All right, then let's start with step one. I will come back to you as soon as I see something interesting or something doesn't work as intended. There is already something to complain about in step 1. Have a look at this plate here. It's not flat. It's bent a bit. Hmm. Well, I hope this is not going to be a problem. Maybe when we have built the whole skyscraper on these plates here, there is enough weight on the plates and then hopefully everything will be plain. Step 23. So far we have built the base. It comes with some details. This gray area here, the screen, some parasols and uh, plants, I think. I noticed that uh, the base doesn't sit flat on the table. It's a bit wobbly. Have a look. I think the cause of this is not that single bent plate that I showed you before. I think it's a problem of the building technique used here. We have um, interlocked a lot of tiles and plates with other plates and these kind of building techniques often end in this kind of wobbliness. But I think once we have added a tower with all its weight on the base here, the whole thing will be plain. I think the wobbliness will be gone then, but we will see. Let's begin with the first parts of the tower now. Step 36. 
We are building a modern tower, so I guess we are going to see a lot of steps like this one. We have to use 72 1x4 plates to build 8 of these identical segments. Step 44. Since our build mainly consists of 1x4 plates, our build gets taller and taller very fast. This is quite interesting. And I want to take the opportunity now to show you how the inner construction of our uh, build looks like. You can see here that we um, have placed these girders here as inner support. <laughs> and yeah, those things are quite huge. So the inner construction even is created faster than uh, the outside construction. Step 45. I think this is the step with the most used pieces so far. We have to use 122 1x4 plates to build 8 of these segments here, which we then can place at the rest of our build. Step 60. Our build is not simply square shaped. It looks a bit like a star, I would say, with these segments here attached to the facade. If it was a fortification from the early modernity, I would call them bastions. <laughs> and yeah, I think the designer had a quite nice idea here to connect these attached segments to the core of the building. You can see here that these things are they stay in place, but uh, they are not totally sturdy. To counter this problem, the designer had the idea to interlock a, uh, a bar with these uh, segments here. And this bar can be connected to a clip which is attached to the building's core and once we have connected the bar with the clip like this then the structure is completely sturdy. This is quite cool. Step 79 we just have completed the tower and now we have to add some smaller stuff at the tower's foot. Step 87. Building the set was really much fun, but the final step is a huge downer. We have to apply this sticker to those two 1x6 tiles. And this means once the sticker is applied, we won't be able to disassemble those two tiles again without destroying the sticker. I don't get why they didn't simply use a 2x6 tile instead of those two 1x6 tiles. It's just stupid. Huh. Well, what I am going to do now is that I will apply the sticker, but then I will take a very sharp knife and slide it along the, uh, this gap here between those two tiles, which hopefully will result in a properly, in a properly uh, split sticker. Then we will be able to disassemble the set again properly. Well, I found an easier solution. I remembered that one of my Lego sets, the Star Wars Scout Trooper helmet set, contains two of these uh, 2x6 tiles in white. So I took one of those tiles and I will replace the missing piece later with a pre uh, piece from Bricklink. Now I applied the Blue Bricks sticker to the Lego piece and this wasn't that easy. I don't know if you can see it, but 
the sticker is more or less exactly the same size as the Lego piece. And this makes applying a sticker not that easy. You have to be very precise, but luckily somehow I managed to apply the sticker in the first try correctly. Huh. All right, then let's remove these two 1x6 tiles and replace them with our 2x6 tile. And this means our build is complete. Yippee ki -yay. I think it looks really cool. It just looks like the real building. <laughs> Here on top we got to see the helipad. And when we have a look from above, we can see that the building is star-shaped. I haven't counted all the floors, but I think the amount of floors should be more or less correct. At least everything looks right. This is a modern tower, so of course we don't get to see too many details. Here we get some segments which are peeking out of the tower, but yeah, that's more or less all. But we get to see some details on the tower's foot. Here is some green and we get to see some parasols. And there are projecting roofs in the front of the building. And in the back. But my favorite detail is that we get to see the black stretch limousine from the Die Hard movie. <laughs> the bricks used for the set are absolutely fine. I didn't have any problems with the clutch power. Maybe the bricks are not the same quality as Lego bricks are, but this is not necessary for the set. The bricks work absolutely fine. The only thing I don't like about those bricks is that most of them come with huge ugly injection holes. Some of the injection points are absolutely fine, like this one here, but most of the plates get these ugly crater-like holes. Luckily, once the build is complete, we only can see four of those holes. One, two, three, and four. All the other ugly injection craters are covered by other plates or tiles like here on uh, on the base or on top of the roof. When you remember one of the plates I used for the base was bent and so our whole base was a bit wobbly but uh, this is not a problem any longer. The tower puts so much weight on the base that uh, the bent plate is forced into place. And now you can see maybe the whole thing is still very slightly wobbly, but <clears throat> this is just normal for a construction block set. This is absolutely fine. Assembling the set was really much fun and I really didn't take uh, much time. It really didn't take much time for assembling over one and a half thousand pieces. This is quite astonishing. Normally, I really need much time for these Blue Bricks architecture sets because they tend to consist of hundreds and hundreds of one by one plates. And yeah, when you place them, you always have to align them. But this is not a problem with this set here. This set barely uses those tiny plates. Most of the pieces used in the set are bigger plates like these 1x4 plates here or also these plates. And yeah, these bigger plates always align themselves perfectly. 
And of course, the building techniques used here are absolutely simple. You don't have to think during the build. You just can put a lot of plates on top of each other. And yeah, everything is quite repetitive, but also very easy to do. And it's really much fun. There is, I think, only the top part here uses some snot technique. But other than that, there is no snot technique used in the set. Stats not on top. And yeah, when you use snot techniques, you often you don't know what you are what you are building right now. But when you use these simple building techniques here where you only put plates on top of each other, you can really see how the tower gets taller and taller in front of you. And this is really fun. I think the set really looks cool and there is not much to complain about. Maybe they could have added a bigger piece of the square in front of the tower, but it's not really necessary. The important part is the tower itself. And this is really well done. I think I'm going to build more of these blue bricks skyscrapers in the future.